Hello everyone and welcome. We're here for the first round of the 2023 Memorial Championship presented by Discraft. The location is the Fountain Hills Disc Golf Course and we've got a great early feature card ready to go for you guys. Hope that you're going to enjoy. In fact, we're going to have more than one feature card, so I'm not going to spoil all of the scores here in this very first release. Hopefully you've been also watching the FPO action unfold. Trying to give you as much coverage as we can. We'll see if we can keep up the pace of multiple cards per day as we're ready to go on the tee of hole number one. 393 feet. The water carry for most of the hole. In fact, about 80%, maybe even 90% of the hole. With this very tiny green. You can find the OB if you go deep past those banners. Of course, short is OB, and a big shank to the right could also even be out of bounds. First on the tee, Aaron Gossage. Place to that high right side. He'll have a decision to make if he wants to run out of putt from there or not. Here's Anthony Barella, one of the newest members of Team Discraft. Barella just inside the circle. Prodigy's own Isaac Robinson. So I'm take down. Well, okay. Put that one in the lake. But you saw him take down Idlewild last year. Of course, a very solid player. And also saw him push Ricky Wysocki all the way to a playoff in the Disc Golf Pro Tour Championships last year. And I know you've been watching the coverage here on the channel, so you are, of course, also familiar with Andrew Marweed, who won here in Arizona just a few weeks prior, taking down the Shelly Sharp as he plays for Team DGA. And Isaac Robinson goes to the drop zone after going out of bounds, and he should have that tap in for the bogey four to start his tournament. And speaking of starting this tournament, or starting here on hole number one as we're watching Gossage line it up, I believe it was this very day, just a few years ago, where we saw Nate Doss card the hole in one here, and that was in fact the first ever ace that we've seen on SportsCenter. Made the ESPN top 10 that night. Barella's attempt is just off the front of the basket. I'm going to also throw it out here early. This is a Thursday night recording. We had recorded two MPO cards, one FPO card. We also got an MP40 card, all recorded. We're going to roll out the MP40 cards later on in the week or weekend. And we're going to try and get you as much coverage. We can't promise exactly what the schedule is going to be, but we're going to try and give it to you throughout. And also, I plan on having other commentators with me. Schedules and things got kind of shifted up at the last moment, so we weren't able to have anyone join me as we're going to roll on through with our Zuka over to hole two, the longest hole that we'll find out here on the course, 703 feet. This is a par four. Landing right about there, where those two guys are, would be a huge pull. And then you need to just beat this final tree without having it skip or rolling into the water. If you do all that, you just might walk away with a birdie three. Are we going first after the birdie on one? And if you've got this shot, it sure is nice. The problem is Aaron hung it out too wide, and that's going to be out of bounds. AB also trusting the forehand, and that checks up immediately. Now, they received an incredible day being Arizona and Fountain Hills, and, he, and me. I was there. Tons of rain. That came in on Wednesday night. So things are just a little bit stickier out here than what we're used to seeing. In fact, I think it's been a relatively 
wet season here in the early going. So we're seeing this grass a little bit greener. We're seeing things definitely stick more out here than what you typically would. Aaron playing out to that right side. That's over near the fairway of three. But he's going to be safe. Marweed now switching it up from the forehand to the backhand. That's going to be wide on that right side, but plenty safe. This card going off a little around, a little after, I want to say, 11 a.m. with two feature cards. We had one that was going off earlier in the day, and then also the final card of the day was another MPO feature card. And that ultimately curls around. Pretty intense <laughs> spotting there by our volunteer. We don't get much indication from him. This is Gossage's fourth after having the OB water penalty stroke. Also want to speak to the calmness out here. So having a conversation as to whether or not it's inbounds. Let's see if I can pull up the caddy book myself. So in any case of uncertainty, within the group. <laughs> They're continuing to discuss the options of him playing a provisional. All right, so we're going to get back to the action of Marweed. I wanted you to hear a little bit of that conversation. But ultimately, the decision to be that was made was for him to play a provisional as if he was in bounds. And that first putt would indicate that as if he was in bounds. So that's a birdie. He's going to retrieve the putter and now play it again as if he's deemed out of bounds. And he also makes that one. Now, I'm going to read on hole two. It says, Lake, painted line right, sidewalk, and beyond is OB. As Barella's in for birdie. Protruding walls in lake are OB. If the tee shot hits a retaining wall, you don't have to re-tee. Play from where it hit the wall, plus one penalty stroke. So that's per the rules. And I'm going to assume at the end of the round, they're going to have a conversation with the tournament director or the people on staff. And I'm just going to go ahead and say it now. It ultimately was carded and finalized as a birdie. So I don't know what the conversation was like. I don't know how it all went down. But when you look at the scorecard, it ultimately was left as a birdie. So we're going to move on to hole three. 294 feet elevated pin you see that line on the right hand side that is actually the fairway of hole two that they were just playing going the opposite direction 
course, if you go deep, you can find yourself out of bounds as well. And there's a painted line on the left side, so you cannot just push it hard left. Otherwise, you could find OB over there as well. That is a good looking line if it checks up and it does. So great shot there by Isaac. Aaron's is pushing pretty hard left, and he actually finds the line. So that's going to be out of bounds, as you can see, just about circle's edge. Very solid there. Aaron's going to save the par. After the OB stroke. Barella inside the circle. A little bit of a slow start for AB. Just one under through the first three. Isaac now also climbs back to one under after the bogey start back on one. And one of the best putters in the game. No problem picking up his birdie. And if you're thinking it sounds... Kind of quiet out there. It's because it is. There's almost no wind to speak of. It is certainly chilly for Arizona standards. I think by a lot of people's standards, actually. Mid to low 40s at this point. Maybe going to creep up to 50 degrees. That cloud cover. There's snow on the mountains behind. Not a typical early March Thursday here in Arizona. Hole 4, 250 feet. Pretty straightforward. There is the island green. If you do not land inside the island, any shot not landing in there goes directly to the drop zone with a one-stroke penalty. Just 250 feet, so not much to this one. I like the line here by Isaac. As that pushes up against the left side, he's going to be inbounds, no problem. Much wider, but effective. No problems for AB with the high spiky route wow that looks pretty good four for four no problems finding the island for anyone on the card uh, i almost have to ask are they island boys are we even referencing the island boys anymore we won't worry about their financial troubles all right isaac in for birdie and if you're singing that song in your head, God bless you. You know what I'm talking about. No problems for Marweed. And if somehow you're new here... First of all, buckle up for some terrible jokes, puns, 
90s references, other pop culture references, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's not everybody's cup of tea, but if uh, you're new here, we've got two rounds at Fountain and two rounds at Vista. We head over to hole number five. Downhill, definitely one of the slightly more challenging birdies to get here. You're playing this downhill. The distance isn't so much the issue. It's that tree, that tree right there that we're going underneath. That's the problem. And then you have an OB road almost directly behind the basket. And then also on that right side, you saw some of the landscaping. Anything inside of that is also out of bounds. So the easy bailout zone is off here to this left-hand side. But you definitely want to crest the hill so you have a good look at the putt. Now the grass is a little stickier there than almost anywhere else. So you're not going to get a big skip. But you got to be careful knowing that the road is directly behind. And I remember the days when this felt like a big pull for a few of our players. And now so many players between both their form and the disc technology, this isn't too much for them. Not much at all. Isaac has some of that tree to contend with. You can see how that ceiling was limiting to him. Clearly a nearly identical putt and look here for AB. And nearly identical result. Gossage has a green light here. He just got close enough to the tree where it's not going to come into play. And that's left side chain and in on the DGA mock X. For a number of years, we've seen a lot of construction going on around this area of the course, this little section down here. and That's all cleared, but Marweed, with the similar look to what we just saw from Gossage, doesn't convert. And we're going to have three pars and a birdie here on hole number five. Big thanks to our friends at the Distinguished Doodle. Make sure you check them out. You can find them online, thedistinguisheddoodle.com. They're also offering up a discount. So if you need some products for your little furry four-legged friend, uh, those are usually going to be dogs, but I guess they don't have to be. Um, go out, check them out today. Organic shampoos and other products. As now we're seeing Gossage and play the spike hyzer up and over, and that's going to finish on the left side. The big challenge there on that left side is that if you're aggressive on your putt, it can certainly roll its way down the hill and find out of bounds. So he'll have a decision to make from over there, and I feel like we're going to see Isaac in a similar area. Not a common play. Not everyone throws forehands as well as Andrew Marweed, but that looks to be effective. AB is also going to be to the left. So Marweed did stay in bounds, although you can see 
just how close he was to going out of bounds there. And he looks somewhat perplexed. I don't know if he's ever missed two putts in a row. <laughs> Thinking about hole five and six, he probably doesn't know how to react. And that's what I was talking about, throwing right at that hillside. I could understand how Gossage could be a little bit tentative. So he's off the front of the cage. Isaac from circle two is in. And AB is also inside the circle now. Count it. Hole six is one of the shorter holes they'll play this weekend. And that's between either course, whether it's the Fountain course or the Vista course. In fact, hole seven, the one they play next, is in fact the shortest hole on the weekend. Hole six right up there, though, as well, is one of the shortest. And with that, we head to seven. Most players will go a low route, sometimes going outside of that tree you see on the right or just underneath it on the left side of the trunk. A four-hander may go up and over on the high left side, going out over the water the entire way. But most of our backhand players will try and throw it low, come in just shy of the hill, then maybe play for a little bit of a skip up. And that's gone deep for Robinson. And he's going to be around circle's edge just to try and save a par. And at 210, you'd think this would be one of the easiest holes. And it really can be easy, but it's also very easy to get a skip off the peninsula and head right into the water. That appears to be the perfect play. And nearly perfect as well for Marweed. So after going out of bounds, he wants to make sure that he's got the good spot. And no problem. You see him right at circle's edge. I thought he was a little longer. But a solid par save there for Isaac. Hole 7 played as the ninth or the 8th easiest hole on the course, so certainly not the easiest for our competitors. Birdie for Aaron as he's going to move to 2 under. This hole on the day averaged 2.69. Ultimately saw 49 birdies out of our field. You want to support the pros? Go get some Frisbees. Well, that makes it easy enough. You want to go out and support a bunch of our top-level pros over there on Team Discraft. Head to teamdiscraft.com. Pick up a bunch of goodies all at once. I believe that site just dropped in the last few days. So go check it out as we're looking at our final par four here on the course. Hole number eight, 570 feet. I feel so much longer. <laughs> Probably because the second shot is always treacherous. AB's crested the hill. There's a bench that is, well, it's kind of a good benchmark. Oh, man, I did it again. Anyway, 
there is a bench that you guys will see in a moment that is a great just overall landmark and reference point. If you get there or beyond, you've thrown a pretty big shot, and that's really the place you're aiming for in order to throw your approach shot onto the peninsula. That or just beyond it. You go too much more past that, and you're going to find yourself in the water OB long. We'll see how all of these shots fare. And that's going to be on the left side, more left than most. Oh, and a heartbreaker hits off the gunite and then ends up rolling back out of bounds. There's the bench, actually, I was just speaking of. You see that Aaron's is essentially tombstone, just short of it. Just needs to scoot inside the tree. Great approach shot for Gossage. Trying to pick up a birdie here on eight. Mm, almost a premature flag, but it ends up flopping over, no problem. And this is beyond smashed I, there's no other words for where this has landed the fact that he's able to then jump putt uh, not as close as you'd like but the fact that he's able to jump putt as an approach is just ridiculous and well so is the putting from isaac robinson Th that's what i'll ask of you guys can you name a more nonchalant putter i'd love to know who it is one that's successful i mean i know there's a lot of terrible putters that can just get up there and act like they don't care and then whiff nonstop. but name me a similar or more nonchalant more relaxed putter or putting stroke than what we see out of isaac robinson i can't think of anyone on the pro level that seems so effortless and yet is so consistent. So leave that in the comments. Do all the YouTube things. Like, share, subscribe. I know you want to win jerky. I'm giving away jerky every single round. Every single nine holes. You're eligible for some jerky or other prizes. Thanks to Double G. But tell me in the comments. If you know of anyone that throws as effortlessly when it comes to putting as Isaac Robinson. We're here on nine. This is a tough one, 406 feet, even closer to the water than we see on eight. And it's so easy to go OB in about six different places here. There is the Mando tree that you're seeing down there at the bottom. Well, and I'll just say it, that's, that's a great shot by Aaron. Him and AB, great shots. This is by far the bonus birdie on this course. There is no other hole on the course that's more difficult to get a birdie two on. Because the smartest, safest play is exactly where that just landed. Uh, you'd love to maybe land where the spotter did, but essentially throwing out to that opening, pitching up, and then walking away with three is really the safest play on this hole. And another green flag. So four of them inbounds. Mm. Oh. The stick tease. Giving us the green and then ultimately the red. So that's going to be an out of bounds. And you see Isaac who's one of the best putters in the world, not wanting anything to do with it. A.B., on the other hand, five under through the first eight. He wants the bonus. Oh, and that's a valid bingo. A.B. cashing it in to go six under through the front nine. After a relatively slow start, missing, what, holes one and three. 
Felt like a pretty slow start for him. Also missed hole five. So there were, I believe, just a couple of birdies on the day when it was all said and done here on hole nine. AB had one of them. And, well, spoiler, Aaron Gossage had the only other one. We literally just showed you the only two birdies that happened on hole nine. And with that, I'm going to close it out. Thank you to the camera crew, all the sponsors. Like, share, subscribe, do all the YouTube things. Thanks so much for watching. I'm not going to give you the scores because that's going to screw up everyone else's or the other feature card coverage. But just click on a box, go to the back nine, watch anything inside of the memorial coverage. I'm the Disc Golf Guy, and I'll see you for the back nine.